The author of the book, Navigating the Healthcare Maze, Jeff Knott joins us. Thank you for being here. Great pleasure to be with you. There's so, you know, there's so much to talk about when we talk about health care. But by virtue of the fact that you have gone to the extent to write a book, you have a very personal story related to the health care system. Share that with us. Absolutely. Um, first of all, uh, Barbara, I am a graduate of Western Kentucky University, and I'm proud of it. Um, after leaving Western, um, I started my career with Johnson & Johnson. I spent 20 years with Johnson & Johnson around the world and had the opportunity to be in 120 countries. So I have a wide perspective of various healthcare systems around the world, the good and the bad and the ugly. Um, so from that perspective, I have seen different healthcare systems over the years and stayed in touch. Uh, then next, um, I spent uh, basically 15 years in the retail business. And as a result, I started to realize, hmm, what is so different about healthcare industry, healthcare systems, as we relate to going to a supermarket, uh, any kind of retail store, aren't we customers? Are they not a provider of services and products? And so, with that in mind, uh, I had this awful thought of writing a book. Or one could call it an <laughs> epiphany of sorts. It is a, definitely, everybody wants to write a book. Uh, but to actually do it, uh, you have to have a certain amount of luck. You have to have the fortitude to perceive, pursue that opportunity, and I did. Uh, at the same time, um, people would say to me, so what do you know about the health care? What do you know about navigating the health care maze? Well, I spent 20 years around the world. I've been in retail, so I saw how consumers react. Then I, I had to fill in the rest of the resume, so I decided to have open heart surgery, uh, uh. Not, not voluntarily, um, but I had um, a congenital aortic valve replacement um, and fortunately I'd been exercising all my life and realized the importance of preventive care that when you do have a catastrophic event uh, you are better prepared than if you did not keep your health in good condition. So I had open heart and I started taking notes in the hospital. Oh I'm sure they appreciated that as they were coming by <laughs> and there you were taking your notes. Absolutely. Um, but what I found was if you approach it with less fear and regard the more the hospital system and being in hospital or your doctor with more uh, general questions, like for instance when you go to the supermarket, tell me more about uh, the bell pepper, tell me more about what is an organic piece of uh, a vegetable. But I've got to ask this, what happened? Where did that disconnect occur? You know, at what point did we think, you know, we see them as deities, you know, the, the health care system. Uh, a lot of people are afraid to ask questions. We're not supposed to ask yeah. questions. You know, there's, there's a disconnect that occurred. When, when did that happen? Well, I think it happened. Uh, let me step back and I'll answer your question this way. I grew up in England and uh, the first chapter of my book talks about getting the measles at the age of seven. And I was in bed and I looked and I had all these spots all over me and I thought, oh my God. The good thing about it is I don't have to make an excuse not to go to school today. Next thing, I hear my mother on the telephone calling the doctor. The next thing, my mother is brushing the house and cleaning, putting the hot uh, water on for tea for the doctor within now there's the doctor. And there were three people in my town at that time who didn't do anything wrong. They didn't drink, they didn't do anything that would be uh, considered, any, considered bad lifestyle. nasty. Yes. And there they were, the banker, the lawyer, and the doctor. They, they were gods almost, and respectfully I say that. And here was this doctor, big bow tie, looked at me, you got the measles. I didn't know what it meant. My mother seemed to know. She suddenly became my nurse. There was a bowl of hot water. And he looked down at me. And would you believe the bow tie is now 
much more effective in hospitals than a tie. And one of the biggest contaminants in hospitals is a tie, <laughs> where they lean over with the tie and cross contaminate. Mm -hmm. He had a chain, watch chain. He looked at me and he said, don't you dare scratch those spots. You will be scarred for life. And I thought, oh my God. And you trust it. Such fear. And then the Ben Casey's came and the Kildare's and there was this image going through life. And then suddenly we started to see errors occurring in hospitals. And now on well, a we started getting wind of those errors. I suspect wind of the errors. Errors Absolutely. had been going on for decades. Absolutely. Yes. And so now we're up to a hundred thousand at least a year in errors in hospitals. Quiet hospital infection known as nosocomial, surgical errors, misdiagnosis. Uh, these are some of the main causes now of errors occurring. And so we don't trust anymore the way we used to trust uh, doctors. So that gives you an idea of where we came. And suddenly, because we're seeing more people coming through the system, and doctors are now forced to rush sometimes in order to keep being able to do what they do, errors occur, and now we're losing the trust and so I really truly advocate in my book and always when I'm speaking of asking questions, bring an advocate along, write down questions and answers. And we're helping the doctor or practitioner really make better diagnosis in any case. Well, it's, gosh, I hate that term, win-win, but it, it, you're all in it together, right? You've got your doctor, you've got your patient, you may have your advocate. You're all working toward the same goal, I would think, so why not ask questions? And yet people don't know what kinds of questions to ask. Absolutely. Um, <clears throat> what really put up the point to me, I was sitting on a plane next to a woman who had a double mastectomy, and uh, chemo is really, really terrible. Chemotherapy is so toxic. And she was mentioned to me, uh, obviously my book is always on my lap on a plane. <laughs> um, and um, she said, I see you wrote a book. She said, I've had so many problems with my doctors. I said, well, respectfully, did you ask questions? She said, no because they have degrees. Oh. So with that, it brought home the point that we in the United States, we read, generally speaking, the average population reads at fifth grade level. Mm -hmm. Anything to do with medical is written at 10th grade or above level. Take a look at an advertisement on TV. Take a look at a newspaper advertisement and try and understand and imagine you're in fifth grade. And so we've lost that, that, there's a gap that we have to bring together and just practice, I find, in the supermarket, retail stores, you know, where was it made? How often do I have to get it cleaned? Uh, would you repeat that in everyday English so I can understand? We have a right, in my opinion, it's our body, we have a right to get the right answers and not be snowed over to have somebody take control of our bodies. And if we do a better job, I think that